A flooded home or business is never easy to deal with. The memories that are lost that you cannot replace. An aquadam can be another tool in your arsenal to protect your home or business from the hurricane storm surge or the king tides. Look us up online at aquadam.net or give Aquadam a call at 707-764-2119. We can help. Uh, consider advertising on the Opperman Report. Uh, we have excellent advertising rates for you. Uh, the advertising rates are very affordable. Uh, once your ad goes up and we play the show on the podcast and on the YouTube channel, uh, those ads stay up there forever. And then we play repeats every single night of classic Opperman Report shows. And your new ads will be inserted into those repeats that play every single night. So uh, the, the, the saturation is incredible and the rates are very affordable. Contact me at OppermanReport at gmail.com. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into KMDLaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Contact KMDLaw. EmailRevealer.com. Go to EmailRevealer.com. We handle adoption investigations, infidelity investigations, email tracing, locate or identify somebody from as little as an anonymous email address, someone owe your money, back child support, we can find that deadbeat and even assist you in obtaining a judgment and recover that judgment for you. Emailrevealer.com, digital forensics, computer forensics, cell phone forensics, recover deleted text messages, create a report that you can use in court. Emailrevealer.com, 800-572-9762. Hey guys, if you like the show and you want to show your support, uh, check out the Opperman Report Patreon. We have all the shows that you hear Monday through Friday on AMFM radio, but we cut out the ads. So you can hear that content ad free. The Opperman Report Patreon, you should stop there once a day and check out what's going on over there. That's Opperman Report Patreon. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I am your host, private investigator, Ed Opperman. Merry Christmas, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, <laughs> and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> okay, the show's over. Goodbye. Leave me alone. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay, you can find me at uh, Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting. Just email me at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. Uh, if you like our show, check out our Patreon. A lot of good, uh, you know what? I can't even say that. I usually say a lot of good new stuff up in Patreon, but I've been really sick and it has been Christmas week. Uh, so there is some new content and some good old content up there. Professor Charles Derber, Dying for Capitalism. That was a really good conversation. How big money fuels extinction and what we can do about it. Very, very nice man, Charles Derber. And by the way, too, he's friends with Noam Chomsky. He says he can hook me up and get me an interview with Noam Chomsky. I just got to uh, contact him. And you know, amongst the 10 million things I got to get done on my list. I'm sitting here. It's a minute to eight trying to do the show. And I'm getting a call from a federal jail, <laughs> federal, federal detention center. A former client of mine uh, got into a little shootout with the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, you know now it's like oh and come get me out of here come save me <laughs> okay right here, i'll get right on it oh my god you know it, this was a that was a long uh situation uh i think i might have mentioned it on here first uh first she got in trouble with some uh, some methamphetamine charges manufacturing cooking meth and then i guess when they finally got around to issuing a warrant for her arrest on that there was a. Sh they went to find her at this location, and there were bullets coming from the inside of the house to the outside of the house. But thankfully, she was not being charged with the 
any of those firearms charges are uh, tempted. <laughs> tempted, who knows what charges. Just uh, the meth charges, which is bad enough, man. You know, uh, I hate to see people get mixed up in that kind of stuff. Christine Kramer, Medicare for All. Uh, Jennifer Senor, Segnor, Playground. A child's lost inside the Playboy Mansion. I've replayed the show several times, but now this you get it for, you know, at the uh, ad free, commercial free over there at Patreon. You can catch it there. A uh, very interesting show. This, my relationship with this guest off the air. There was some potential litigation, some different people we were talking to about the litigation. And we, we got into a lot of stuff about Anna Nicole Smith. And I was supposed to interview a friend of Anna Nicole Smith who's very suspicious about her death. Uh, we got into the whole thing about the, the alleged tunnels under the mansion and stuff like that. But let me tell you, we, we went in depth into all that way further than just on the interview on the, the, the show there. Um, because anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on there. But anyway, that's a good interview. Check that out. And uh, I learned a lot uh, in that interview and meeting those pe- people. H.B. Alborelli uh, Jr. Coup in Dallas, the decisive investigation into who killed JFK. Plus, we have that other in, uh, interview coming up uh, with, um, oh, how do I fix that? Uh, oh, I know what to do. I'll go there and turn off those notifications. Go there real quick. As quick as, quick as a bunny, I'll go. Here we go. Uh, where it says notification, push notifications, and you turn those off, and then no one can hear. Be quiet as a mouse. They'll just hear my, my inmate friend calling call me out, trying to get all the way. Uh, let's see here. Back to the notes. We go here and get to our notes. Uh, there. Yes, there. Oh, no, we were looking on Patreon over here. Uh, Everett Stern did another third interview with Everett Stern. He's an interesting guy. He's kind of a whistleblower kind of character. Uh, he's being sued again by General Flynn. He says this time he's not backing down. He's going to fight back to the end of the last bullet. <laughs> so he's fighting back against General Flynn. And he was tipping off information to that FBI agent, McGonagall, uh, who was getting paid off by Oleg Deripaska, uh, the Russian oligarch. So, People need to understand what's going on here. The FBI agent in charge of the New York City field office investigating Trump for Russian collusion was being paid off, bribed by the Russian oligarch that is alleged that Trump was colluding with. And then he declares that Trump was not colluding with him. Now, somehow the extreme right Fox News guy said, well, the only person uh, who got convicted of colluding with the Russians was the man who was investigating Trump for colluding with the Russians. Ha, ha, ha. And they put out this meme, like, and, and, and idiots read this stuff like it's real. Just beyond me, I don't know how to deal with this kind of stuff anymore. I'm getting so frustrated. It's like shoveling uh, against the ocean. Um, you know, and just this this idiotic memes. I get I get upset when I do the show on Friday, and I'm trying not to do that tonight. Okay, trying not to do that tonight. Uh, so Everett Stern's back, and we talk about that because this McGonagall character was his FBI mm-hmm. point of contact, and we get into some other stuff too. He's a good guy. Sam Spadino, Trump and Epstein, uh, some Opperman Live shows like I'm doing right now with the Ed Scott story of reality winner, uh, interview with her mom. Uh, Melvin Dumar and Howard Hughes Will. I really enjoyed that interview with Melvin Dumar. By the way, it's not on here. I did an interview with, uh, oh, here it is. Oh, yeah, it's not on here. I, maybe I didn't send it to good old Ed Parnell. Uh, but I did an interview with this woman, Leslie Sharp, about uh, the new Alberelli book about the coup, uh, the JFK coup. A lot of times I'll tape an interview and I'll forget it to send it over to Ed uh, so that it gets processed correctly with the different commercials for the different markets to be put into and stuff like that. And then it just sits there lost. You know, there's there's probably a good 10 or 15 interviews I've done that are just lost, you know, and then because I just, my memory is just not there anymore. Like it was at one time. So that's our uh, Patreon. And then don't forget our Spreaker every Friday night. I do a live show on Spreaker. If you're listening to this on YouTube, delete YouTube. And go to Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Look up Opperman Report. That's where the really good shows are. Uh, YouTube edits and deletes 
about half of my, my shows that I put up each week. Also, too, they demonetize me. I get to pay nothing for, for YouTube. I get no benefit from YouTube other than complaints from the listeners. Uh, also, too, um, they've demonetized me. They've shut the, they're going to shut down that channel sooner or later. So get on board with Spreaker. There's a chat room with lovely chatters in there right now as we speak. And you can go here. There's a, You get an email notification whenever I put up new content. I put up new content every day. It's way better than, uh, than uh, YouTube. And there's a link on every show. At the top, it says this this YouTube show came from Spreaker. So if you don't like the audio, you got a problem, whatever's going on there on YouTube, just click on that link. You go direct to the source. You hear it right from there, from the horse's mouth. <laughs> That's me, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. <laughs> and it's, uh, well, yeah, I tell you, it was tough growing up, man, with a name like Ed when Mr. Ed was on TV, the talking horse. A uh, horse is a horse, of course, of course. Uh, you know, they said that when you played that backwards, it would say that the source is Satan. If you played the, the Mr. Ed song, the horse is a horse, of course, of course, and we went up with a talking horse, and it is a source. And we didn't even talk about the source forward, the talking Mr. Ed. And but if you listen to it backwards, if you played it backwards, it would say the source is Satan. The source is Satan. I don't know if it's you know. I'm just telling you what I know. Just telling you, I report to you the facts as I know them. It's all I could do for you. Some good stuff coming up. Um, I have a, a historic interview with a fellow. You'll know the topic. You'll know the subject right away the second you hear about it. It's something everyone knows about in this uh, area that you know I've concentrated my, my work on the past 10 years. Everyone will know, will know right away what the topic is. And everyone will know right away that people have died reporting on this topic. But this will be the first time the actual person directly involved in this at the root of the whole situation will be interviewed on the radio. The very first time, probably the last. And I was able to get this interview because people who know me and respect my work uh, out there in the real world that are actually really involved in these type of things uh, put the interview together for me. Okay, and This wasn't something I searched out. It was, it was just brought to me. Uh, so and I, I thank the people involved, too. I know they're not listening because they're too busy and important. But <laughs> I thank them for giving me this opportunity. There's not too many places you can go uh, with this kind of information that's a, it has, well, to a, a respectable, you know, legitimate source, a guy that uses his real name, his real reputation, his real uh, life, is, you know, a, a real person. It's not it's a made-up uh, uh, Twitter handle, you know, some nonsense out there. So keep an eye for that. I have another fellow I'm interviewing who's uh, all mixed up or has a historical involvement with uh, Larry Flint and the shootout at the Flint mansion between the Metzer guys and the Menser, the Bill Menser guy, the guy they call the second Manson. Uh, I got him coming on, too. I don't want to mention him, him directly either because uh, of all the situations we have going on. Around. I got some old yippy friends I'm going to be bringing on the show, too. I'm trying to get on the show. Um, and, um, I guess that's it about the upcoming stuff. Um, uh, oh, oh yeah. A guy uh, directly around John Lennon too, uh, who's had some problems with Yoko and stuff like that. It seems like he's brave enough to come out of the woodwork now too, and come on the show. So a lot of good stuff out there in the horizon for you. Um, some historical stuff, you know, that that's really a big deal, uh, coming up and, uh, it'll be on the, 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 the Wikipedia page for that topic. Because it'll be the only interview, so we could definitely get it up there on that. Um, and uh, the way things are looking, um, well, we'll we'll get into that later because we're going to be talking about my health situation too. Okay, um, and and well, I want to pre preface that before we get to that topic. Okay, um, is that I am going to be talking about some personal health issues that I've had. I've come on the show the past month or two, and I told you almost every week I've had either a bad headache or a fever. And I've been talking about the on the Facebook and stuff like that about the past month. I've been throwing up every day. So I know when, when anybody in the public eye goes and makes a public statement about their health or their well-being or their medical situation, this triggers a lot of people. So I'm, I'm begging you in advance, please, I know you're being triggered right now as I say this and you want to send me home remedies and cures <laughs> and stuff you've seen on YouTube and Twitter and TikTok on how to cure me and heal me. 
And I thank you for that, but please do not contact me with any of that stuff. Okay, and if you don't, if you're not keeping up with what I'm talking about, don't ask me about my health. I'll tell you, I tell you, I'm telling you, you know, over and over what's going on. So just, just wait. Okay, uh, no, don't contact me about it, please. I'm begging you, don't contact me with any medical advice. If you're triggered about vaccines or non-vaccines or whatever, whatever you're being triggered about, leave it to yourself. Don't bring it to me, please. Okay, because things are bad enough, man. You know, I got to deal with enough stuff here. I got, you know, sh- people with shootouts <laughs> calling me up. Right? But I don't know how many other podcasters out there or YouTubers out there or Twitterers out there have people calling them up from the, the, the holding cell. <laughs> I can't go, you know, who just got into a shootout with the cops. Not many. Not, I can guarantee you not many. I don't know how many got clients about to testify against Trump in March again in the Stormy Daniels case. I don't know how many out there besides me. Not many. Okay, I think I think but on that one I can say maybe one. Although uh, uh, Michael Cohen comes close, but uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you're watching this thing. My, oh, my beautiful daughter Victoria. Uh, she's out in California right now. At uh, Sunset Beach, which is by, uh, um, oh, I forget, with, with the Huntington Beach. Sunset Beach is this beautiful little area in California. It's a little tiny beach. Uh, it's not very crowded. It's this little town. And uh, we used to go there when she was little, and we'd go to Disneyland. Um, and uh, we'd always say, oh, boy, one day, you know, we'll rent one of these little houses here on the beach for a week. You know, you could, and I would explain to her, you know, you could rent one of these places here. And be she go, oh, Dad, that would be so great. We could live on the beach here for a week, you know. Uh, can we afford that? Said, well, we can't afford it now, but someday we will, <laughs> you know. And, when, you know, it, she got together with her friends, and they went on a little trip to California. The, this, um, they just got there today. They're going to be there to, for a few days. And they rented this Airbnb, and wouldn't you know it, it's right there on the beach where we used to go when she was a little kid um so just you know thank god for that and she was even crying so i feel like crying just talking about it um you know god bless her you know and all on her own man her own success her own money her own uh these relationships she has with these friends of hers are all brilliant brilliant people man they're all like uh phds and stuff man these, these people she hangs out with you know now I'm just a big dummy. <laughs> you only come to your dad now with advice on how to change a tire when your battery is dead. We've reached that point in life. <laughs> oh my God, 17 minutes in. What the hell is going on here? <sighs> and I talk fast too. So anyway, it's Christmas week and it reminds me of uh, uh, this time between Christmas and New Year's. My whole life has always been just this wild time for me. Um, and, and with Vic, you know, we've been to Disneyland on Christmas Eve. We've been there Christmas Day. We've been on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Not all, all every time on all those days, but just over the years. Um, and trips to California. It's always been a special time for us. And uh, I can remember back um, in the 80s, Lynn Samuels on, the, on WBAI <laughs> radio station, when she had her show on Friday nights. She would do this thing where she would, that you could take nine phone callers all on the phone at once. And so she would bring nine callers on and we would sing Christmas carols all together. And I've always wanted to do that. I could do it with Skype, but just I got so many technical audio problems here that it's just not set up for me to take phone calls right now, which I got to get that fixed, man, before I go. I got to take some phone calls before I go. Uh, but just that was just such a, a wonderful time for me, my own old Christmas memory for me. I remember one time we were singing, and, and I started barking. You know, we were singing about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I was barking along instead of singing. And they would say, what's this reindeer don't bark? What's going on here? Ah, it's that Ed. <laughs> it's Eddie from Staten Island. Oh, boy. And I also remember, too, another memory growing up, Staten Island, is um, Christmas time, the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. When you were coming from Manhattan to go to Staten Island at the end of the night, all these Wall Street guys who lived on Staten Island, high school graduates, not, very few of them had a good education or anything, but they would get these great jobs on Wall Street because they just needed bodies to fill up these, you know, these rooms up there, these businesses. And there was a, a bar that was in the ferry terminal on the Manhattan side. And these guys would get, the old expression is, you know, bleep-faced, you know. <laughs> they would get blitzed, these guys. Uh, trying to, and, you know, and they would be like 
four hours late getting home, you know. And then on the ferry, you could buy drinks on the ferry too. You could buy beer on the ferry. And uh, the, then the lower level of the ferry is where all the pot smokers were. You could smoke pot down there. And when I was going back and forth, I'd always be selling pot on there too as well. That's my New York um, uh, Christmas week memories. Uh, one of my most difficult memories, and I've talked about this before on the years, I had to fire somebody once. I think it was Christmas Eve. I hate to admit it, but when I had the beeper company in the Staten Island Mall, uh, I had this woman who worked for us, and she was okay. She was an okay employee, you know, better than the people that just came and went, you know. She was around a while, and her husband or her live-in boyfriend, baby father, I don't know what the deal was, he was a, a New York City bus driver. And I've talked about this on the air before, too, that bus drivers have groupies. There's girls who ride around on the bus and they fall in love with the bus driver, okay? And they have groupies and uh, who, like, get these crushes on them and then start riding the bus at times when they don't have to ride the bus and then flirt with the bus driver and pass their phone number to them and stuff. All kind of weird stuff goes on with these bus drivers. And there was a problem with the schedule where we put this woman on the schedule and she couldn't cover the time or what. She was arguing with my managers. And, uh, you know, we told her, listen, this is it, man. You've got to work these hours. This is what we're giving you. We, you'd have to fill the booth at these times. And uh, her husband came down to the booth and started fighting with her manager. And they called me down. And I had to go down there. And uh, so I just, you know, it was chaotic. And you have no idea, like, how much important it is to make money when you're in retail. This uh, October, November, December. Okay, Christmas season. The the rent in the mall goes up. There's this seasonal rents that you got to pay, which was like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Okay, and that was back in the 80s and 90s. It was back in the 90s. You know, it was thirty. I was paying that. I was seven thousand uh, a month normally, and then it, for those four months, you'd have to give them like a, you know forty thousand. So it was crazy, the the rents back in those days. Um, it was for a little tiny space. So I have the pictures up on my Facebook page. It was a tiny little kiosk. Um, you could fit like three or four people in there working, and you had to have a couple outside during the Christmas months. You'd have a lot of people working there. And uh, so we just had this situation where we just had to shut it down. I couldn't have this guy here, you know, fighting with the manager in front of all the customers who were losing business, a lot of money, and it was thousands a day. So I had to toss him out of there. <laughs> and then I said, okay, so I said, look, man, can we, can we get along without her if we fire her right now? And they says, yeah, and get rid of her right now. We got, we got, we got to move on. We got to make money. And I had to fire somebody. I would think it was Christmas Eve. I had to fire somebody. But it had to be done, man. You know, you, you got to, you know, what are you going to do? I got to pay the rent. I got to pay the employees, right? You know, and it's that money you need to live on for the whole year. Like right now, it's the same thing with radio advertising. This is where the money is made. November, December, October, no, uh, November, uh, October, November, December. These are the months. Okay. This is when all the money is coming in right now. Today, I'm going to make some good money today. Okay. That's why I need everybody to, to retweet and share these shows for, on Spreaker as much as you can, because this is when I make the money that I live on for the rest of the year. And it was so important. If I could have got some people to help me make these TikToks this month and got some people to come in here and help me out with, you know, with all this stuff I need help with, you know, there's just so much opportunity here. But so a ton of money slipped in my hands uh, this year. Um that I'm going to need to live on the rest of this year. So come February, March, I'm going to be in big trouble uh, if I make it that long because I'm going to be telling you about my whole situation later on. Anyway, another Christmas memory I have, and this is a happy memory. Not all of my memories are miserable memories, <laughs> okay? It just seems that way because I dwell on misery and I dwell on unhappy memories. Uh, but uh, there was this one year, It was again, it was Christmas week, and our credit card machine broke down. The credit card machine stopped working. This was like in 91, 92. So it wasn't like you could just, you know, go you know, call a salesperson, a sales rep, and have they would run over with a new credit card machine. Or you could, you could get one online, Amazon delivered the next morning. The credit card company, uh, machine company that we worked with was in Florida at the time. We were in Staten Island, New York. 
And I was on the phone with them all day. We need this machine. We need this machine tomorrow. When we wake up tomorrow, we have to have this machine. I don't care how much it costs. Where can I buy one used and get a program? What can we do? Oh, no, we have to program it here. And I was talking to this young lady on the phone the whole time who was being so damn helpful with me. You have no idea. So finally, I said to her, I said, well, listen, here's what you can do. We can buy a plane ticket, okay? And you put this thing in a suitcase and you bring it down there. You check in the suitcase at when you're at the drive up outside. You check it in. And then you don't have to use the plane ticket to get on the plane. They'll send, because of that, t- that, that ticket, you might have to, I think you might have had to go and uh, got the ticket at the gate and, and you didn't have to go up to the entryway though. You had to go, to, you had to get the ticket and you could put the luggage on the, on the, at the curbside and then it would come off the carousel on the other end if there was no one flying next to that bag. Okay. You could do that back then. This was before September 11. You can't do that now. Every piece of luggage has to match a human being on the plane. Otherwise, they, they go search for that luggage or they search for the person. And they take it off. Because, you know, the, you know what? The possibilities of, you know, you know what? Terrorism. But you could do this back then. And I knew this because of my experience in marijuana smuggling. <laughs> okay? Because one of the things we would do is we would put the, the, the pot in a suitcase. Right? You'd put the pot in a suitcase. You'd buy a ticket for it. And it would, you'd put it on the, the curbside, check it in. And it would be like a little mark on it, right? Then you would have a guy flying on the plane with an identical suitcase with all clothes in there that, that match him, that, that fit him and all kind of stuff like that. And the other bag, you would have the, the one with the pot in it. You would have somebody else's like woman's clothing in there and all kind of clothing that didn't match this guy. When the guy gets off the plane in, Staten Island, in uh, New Jersey, Newark Airport, he sees the two suitcases, right? He takes the one with the mark on it that has the pot in it with the women's clothing, and he walks out the door. Now, if they stop him, if they if they hit it with the dogs, and they know there's pot in that bag, he goes, what, what are you talking about? Oh, look, I got the wrong bag. That's my bag over there. <laughs> and then they open up the two bags. They see, oh, look, look he's right. It has this ticket. It matches his name. Look at it. You're right. It's the wrong bag. Open up the other bag with the pot. Oh, look, there's women's clothes. It's it's not his. Okay. And the guy, you can beat that in court. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. They may know what you're up to, what you're doing, but that's the kind of case you could beat in court. And also, too, if the guy has, you know, a, a letter of a job interview in, in Staten Island, you know, all kind of stuff, you know, the, you, you, we would make an effort <laughs> what we were doing here. It was an amateur hour. So I tell this girl, I said, listen, I'm going to pay for a plane ticket. I need you to go down to the airport. I'll pay. I'll do this for you. And she goes, oh, no, no. I'll, just, I'll bring it to the airport. She, I pay for the ticket. She brings the, the credit card machine. She checks it in. It goes on the carousel, right? When I go to pick it up at the airport, she comes running over. She sees me pick up the suitcase. She comes running over to me. She goes, I came to New York for Christmas. <laughs> I said, what? She goes, yeah. I came. I want to see the Rockefeller Christmas tree. <laughs> and she thought that she could get off the airport in Newark Airport and like walk to Manhattan and see the Christmas tree. <laughs> okay. And she wasn't that young either. She was like 25 years old, but she was from Florida. You know, it was a long time ago. They didn't have the internet back in those days. So me, the wonderful guy that I am, okay, I took her, I put her in my car. <laughs> All right. We went to the mall. We set up the credit card machine for the next morning. And I took her to Rockefeller Center to see the Christmas tree. And then when we were there, there was something. It was like a TGI uh, Friday's or a Long John Silver's restaurant that was over there. Right. And she saw that. She goes, oh, let's go there. <laughs> And I said, no, 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 I'm going to take you someplace nice to you. I'll take you to a nice New York restaurant. I'll take you there. And then I'm taking you straight back to the airport. You're leaving tomorrow. Uh, but that was a, a that, you know what? That was a really a fun, you know, it was a really cool day too, man. It was a fun time, man. And uh, yeah, a nice, I don't know, man. Like someone you never see him again. It's just kind of a cool thing. Never heard from her again over the years. Never, not even once. Okay. Um, let's see. Um... How the time is doing. Oh, we're doing good. Okay, good. All right, good. So those are my Christmas stories, what I remember, uh, besides uh, um, 
first Christmas I've ever had in 23 years where I didn't spend with my daughter Victoria, where we were different states and different um, having different celebrations. And also, too, another, uh, I, I remember, I think I might have told you this a couple of weeks ago, I started telling you about uh, when I was voted the top 100 men of Las Vegas by Las Vegas Magazine. Um, then I started getting interviewed, in, invited to all these parties and stuff like that. And I was invited to a, a Christmas mansion party in Vegas. And somehow I became friends with the servers um, who, because I was vegan and they were vegan, so they went hunting me down to bring me vegan uh, hors d'oeuvres. And um, I, I found out, I just found out this year that one of those girls died. She died somehow. Um, and I still, I'm, I'm not 100% sure of what the details were. You know, when we hung out a couple of times, I think we were supposed to hang out one time. We never could find each other. I think it was at the Fremont Street uh, Art Museum down there. And uh, tickets to an event or something. And uh, never really saw them again. But, you know, to, to, you know, someone you hung out with, you had fun with, you find out they died uh, years later. It's kind of heartbreaking speaking of death <laughs> okay speaking of death i stumbled on this story and it turns out this thing goes way back to 2014 in phoenix there was this company called the biological resource center incorporated right and what they would do is they advertised themselves it was run by this guy named uh Gore, his last name was Gore, and his, his name was Stephen Gore, and his wife's name is Sally Gore, G-O-R-E, and they would take donations of cadavers of recently deceased human beings, and one of the things they would do is they'd say, well, listen, we'll take your, your body for you, and we'll cremate it for you for free if you if we can donate some of the parts to science, so it turns out, and by the way, too, you know, I, I looked up the business license for this place, and the, the, they were licensed for uh, for-profit medical research with no qualifications. You can do that in Phoenix. You can open up a business and call it medical research and go into this body receptacle donation business with no, qual- no licensing, no qualifications, no nothing. You know, you just apply for the license and they give it to you. Anybody can, well, back then, I don't know if they've changed it because it was a huge lawsuit with the FBI involved. Because the FBI agents who went in there finally and raided this joint after they started hearing the crazy stuff that was going on in there, uh, uh, coolers full of human penises, that they had one corpse with the head of another corpse sewed to the body of another corpse. Now, I told you this story not too long ago about, about the Harvard uh, morgue uh, and how they were selling these body parts, and and some of those body parts were be, were winding up in occult bookstores, and and many many of these skulls and stuff like that wound up in this guy's house, and when the cops showed up to this guy's house, they said to him, "Is anybody else there here in the house?" And he says, "Only my friends." And he showed him all these skulls and body parts, and that he had on his bed, he would sleep with these skulls. So now this place here. Right, a very mysterious. But I've been looking into this. I've been finding out some things. I'm talking to some people who used to work there. A lot of rumors. Of what's going on? Uh, one thing is when you when you look at the old news stories and the old information about this, it talks about how they were selling some of these bodies overseas, and no one knows to who to unknown locations and people. Um, but some of the stuff was being sold to, to just people off the street were buying this. Stuff. By the way, too, the the original place, Biological Resource Center. If you Google it, it's still that there's a phone working phone number and it's a working location. They're no longer licensed. I don't know. They seem to be working under another business. Um, and, and it's open 24 hours is another thing, too. How weird is that? Well, you, you need 24 hours body uh, brokering. There's a whole business in this body brokering. It turns out that one of the people they're selling these bodies to is the U.S. military. The U.S. military is buying these bodies so that they can shoot at them and do all kind of military testing on these uh, these bodies and these cadavers. But like I said before, they had a uh, coolers 
They're lying around unlabeled, unmarked, no dates with penises in them. With like a hundred penises. So just bizarre, incredible stuff here uh, with this uh, biological resource center. And like I said, and, and when you read the reviews on uh, also too on uh, <laughs> on Google, when you look this place up, there's, there's the people this, who dealt with them and worked with them. They said they all say this is a crazy shady stuff, and it seems like the only thing keeping them in operations is their contracts with the U.S. military, which makes sense, man. You know, but somehow they got raided by the FBI and supposedly shut down, but they just opened up with the same phone number and another business. So I got some interviews lined up on that that I'll be getting back to you with. Uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll get you some good, good, good information on that. Let's see how we're doing on time here. We'll take a peek. We're doing good. 35, 45, 55. got 20 minutes. Good. I'll tell you how I'm dying in a little minute here. Okay. Um, what else is going on? Oh, God. Well, Trump's knocked off the ballot in Maine. Which is a pretty uh, serious blow to his campaign. And uh, once again, you know, people uh, who aren't following the the Supreme Court hearings uh, don't just don't understand. And they say, well, this is unconstitutional. It can't be more constitutional because what they're following is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. But if if you're not following the trial in Colorado and the uh, Supreme Court hearings in the state of Colorado, if you haven't been following that, sure, it, it came to you as a shock, and now you're seeing a bunch of memes and a bunch of little sound bites and tweets, and yeah, that's great, but you know, the, the, why, well, you can go submit that to the Supreme Court next time it's a Supreme Court hearing, <laughs> okay? And that's Because that's how this stuff is dealt with. It's not dealt with tweets and memes, like, what's going on, man? Like, what's going on? There's, like, no uh, uh, interest in reality anymore. You know, I'll say it again. This whole business with this Epstein list. You know, people are still coming to me. People I know. People who know me in real life. Who know more about my involvement in all this Epstein stuff than I've ever talked about on the radio. Okay, that I've ever talked about to, to the general public, that I've ever tweeted about, that I've ever Facebooked about, okay, or Instagrammed about. People that know me in real life come to me and say, well, Ed, what about this list, <laughs> the client list? You know, for, for one more time for my audience who doesn't listen any either, okay? <laughs> no one really seems to listen anymore, okay? It, it, first of all, it's not a list, Okay? This is not a list. This is 170 names from the Goofree versus Maxwell defamation lawsuit that were sealed during the lawsuit. The Miami Herald sued to have them unsealed. So now these names, these 170 names are being unsealed. There's three names that are not being unsealed. One is a misidentification of a person. They got the wrong guy from a photo. We don't know why the other two are yet. We don't know. We'll find out. It's not a big, you know, it's not this big mystery that people think this is. You know, um, the rest of the 170 names are not all clients. Okay. In fact, I challenge you to show me any testimony or any evidence of a single client who paid Epstein to have sex with a child. There is nothing out there. Uh, There are people who were paid by Epstein to provide children to Epstein. Sarah Gellin is one. Gillian Maxwell is another. There's a few others. Often I can't remember the names on top of my head. Um, Okay, that there's evidence of, that there's testimony of. They're still trying to find Sarah Gellin and serve her. She was given a $6 million mansion in Miami. No one can find her. But there's no evidence of these rich and elites who paid Epstein to fly to his island and have sex with children. That doesn't exist, okay? Any, if anything, the money was going the other way. Epstein was providing children to people to have sex with, and he was also paying them money and, and donations and all kind of stuff like that and different kind of support. That There's evidence of that. There's also evidence of these young uh, victims, these young uh, sex-trafficked young ladies who then became semi-sex traffickers themselves. It was like Amway. 
Most of this activity took place 25 miles away from Epstein's mansion in Palm Beach, Florida, at the Royal Palms High School, and at the uh, the nearby uh, um, uh, uh, trailer parks off of Belvedere Avenue. I forget what the name of the trailer, trailer park is, but it's not far from the high school, and it's off of Belvedere Avenue in West Palm Beach. And, and Epstein would drive around that trailer park in his Lamborghini and his Ferrari, whatever that car was, you know, looking for some of his favorite girls. And he would go to, um, he had girls from West Palm Beach High School, as young as freshmen, that they would go there, they could pay $300 to go with Epstein, give him a shot, so, you know, and he'd try and, you know, molest them. And if they didn't want to go back, you would tell them, well, listen, you don't have to come back, but I'll pay you 200 if you get another girl to go, but you go back to the school and find another girl to come here, I'll pay her 300 I'll pay you 200 so some of do we want to list them twelve year old girls that were getting paid? Do we, we want to expose them? And I don't think so. Okay, and some of them are, are kind of well known names in this circle too. Okay, this is just how this is, man. Okay, I don't make you know I don't have a dog in this fight. This is just how this is. This is what happened. So the names that are being unsealed now are names from. It's not a list. It's names from emails, from pictures, from photographs. Some of them are victims. You know, some of them are just business people who did nothing wrong that are now going to have their names unsealed and are going to be pointed at as pedophiles, okay? So that's just how this is, man. But there's no client list in existence out there that of, of that there was some kind of a child prostitution ring going on here that, that Epstein had a list of clients that were paying him. There's no evidence of that, Okay. Then that's just the reality, but I'm fighting against the uh, shoveling against the ocean with, people, with all these memes talking about lists and the islands and, and Epstein didn't hang himself. And, uh, and and you wonder why some of these things get so popular, but no one ever talks about the Butterfly Trust where, or, you know, where the Southern Trust or no one ever talks about Tower Financial, how 400 million disappeared from Tower Financial and wound up in the, the, the Southern Trust in, in the Virgin Islands. Okay. And then how um, uh, Darren Enzyke and Richard Kahn uh, siphoned off um, $10 million each to the Butterfly Trust, which was under their wives' names. These are uh, executives of the estate who stole $10 million. Bucks. There's no question about this. It's what happened. No consequences. There's no meme about that. What about Victoria's Secret? Uh, Lex, Les Wexner. There's no meme about, hey, let's boycott Victoria's Secret. Let's boycott the limited. Oh, no, 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 nothing, nothing. Nobody wants to hear that. We want the list. We want the list. The list. Show us the list. That we want justice for the list. You know, and people don't know anything that's going on with this stuff. And by the way, too, I want you to look around, Okay. Look, who else, any podcasters out there or Twitterers out there, anybody like that, out there, these famous people like that, are any of them coming to you frustrated about the disinformation and the misinformation that's out there floating around? How come the only guy out there who's all upset about this and ranting and raving about this every week is the one guy that was actually involved in this stuff that's not getting paid anything right now? <laughs> okay. You know, some of the other people that are involved in this are profiting off this still, okay? They're making a good, good, good uh, li- living off of this, man. Okay, and you don't hear them complaining, but you know, come on, man. Ask yourself why some of these superstars on this topic or aren't frustrated about this mis- about this mis- Why are they promoting this stuff? Uh, okay, all right. Let's see how we're doing on time. I'll just get into my, my... <laughs> forty-three. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, one of the last things here is uh, main Epstein list. Uh, Idaho four, you know, they they demolished the the house where the Idaho four murders took place before even the trial and the conviction. That's really bizarre and unusual. And usually, when you, that's an indication, when you see them destroy the crime scene, they did it in Dahmer, they did it in Ray Martin Preschool, they did it in um, uh, Ariel Castro, they did it with John Wayne Gacy. Uh, and it's usually there's a sex trafficking or human trafficking element to the case when they do that. That's been my experience. So that might be something you want to take a good look at when you're in researching and looking into this Idaho 4 case. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm going to end the show early anyway because I'm tired and I'm sick. Now, my health issues. Okay, I've been talking to you about this for a couple of weeks now. 
And pretty much every Friday night, I tell you, oh, boy, I've been sick all day. I've been sick all week. Like right now, I got a huge headache and I got a fever right now. Okay. Now, just in general, um, and when I look at pictures of myself three years ago before I left Vegas, you man, I, there's a picture of me out there, man, where I'm hiking and I'm like flexing my, my bicep, you know, and I'm ripped, man. You, I don't, you know, that wasn't that long ago, man. This is a couple of years ago. It was three years ago. I was swimming. I was hiking. I was riding my bike. I was a fit guy. And I, man, you know, I would look at other guys, 59 years old, 58 years old, and I'd laugh at them. Look at these obese, bald men, you know, look at me. When I'd be at the, in the locker room at the gym. I'd be laughing at these guys. And even, you know, uh, even in my early 50s, you know, uh, I would go to the basketball court. I'd play basketball with these guys in their 20s, man. I'd wipe them out. I'd run them into the ground. And even before that, man, when we would go, me and Vic would go to Sunset Park every day after school 15 years ago, not that long ago. But they, these Marines would go there. These soldiers would go to the park there and work out at the park. And I would do more chin-ups than any of these guys. Man, they would always stand back, let the old man through and, and do his chin-ups. And I'd be doing chin-ups for 20 minutes. All right? So anyway, those days are gone. Yeah, you know, I just posted a picture of me from last Christmas. And man, I look at that picture, I look like crap. You know, people say, oh, man, you don't look so bad. You look, you look good. You look healthy. Like, oh, my God. I wish I looked like that right now. Okay? Uh so, the way my health has deteriorated um, since I moved to Florida in the past three or four years, whatever it's been, if it were to continue at this rate another three years, I'm, I'm gone in three years, okay? If, if, if it were to continue at this rate, I think it's uh, accelerating, okay? The rate of deterioration is accelerating. I um my arm is a mess. My arm is withering away. It's gonna fall off. Okay, I'm gonna have one arm soon. Uh, I've got a fever almost every single day. I, I been I lost in the past month about thirty pounds. I throw up every day. I, I when I my last meal at night, I usually throw it up. I get up in the middle of the night and throw up. And my first meal in the morning, I can eat a few bit of, bit of bites of food and I throw that up. So. Past few days hasn't been that bad. Yesterday was okay. Um, there was like one day this week I didn't throw up. Um, today I don't think I've thrown up yet. Um, but I still have to eat a meal I haven't eaten yet. So, and that's just a few things wrong with me. Now, I've tried with, the, you know, I had medical insurance. And uh, I spent like, like, Eleven thousand dollars over two years, and I, I got no benefit from it whatsoever. Um, you know, I no one really examined my arm for real. I'd never really had an MRI or an X-ray or nothing like that. I spent all that money, nothing. You know, it was just a total waste of time. I can't navigate my way through the medical system the way it is today. It's just too. I can't do it. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I can't do it. You know, if you're an expert on that and you could help me with that, then you could contact me, but not just Google some Ed call us number. Call. I, I've done that. I've done. I know how to Google just like you know how to Google. OK, so I've tried all that. I can't I don't qualify for Medicaid and stuff like that anymore. What I had in Nevada, I had some free medical care that was able to get the hernia done. Don't have that either. They, I, own, I own a house. So they can't qualify for that. So can't do that. My medical coverage that I could get sucked you know, I couldn't get any help from that. So if you ask me, oh, Ed, what are the doctors and say like that? I, mean, I tried to see the doctor. I just had was, somebody was working for me recently. We tried to navigate our way through the medical system. We cannot do it. I cannot get to see a doctor. Okay. And, and you know, maybe you're laughing at me. You think it's so damn easy. I just can't. Well, maybe it's, it's just me. Maybe I just can't do it. Okay. Uh, or maybe, you know, the forces I'm up against or, you know, prevent me from doing it or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but it's just been very unsuccessful. So that's my, my medical situation right now. Okay. J just at the rate I've been going, I'm not going to make it three years at the rate I'm going right now and the acceleration, I'm not going to make it three months a year and I'm, I'm, uh, resigned to it. You know, I'm never going to have the life I used to have. Uh, I'm never going to be, I have the kind of health and fitness and, and well being and pain free daily life that I, that I once had. It's just not going to happen again, you know, uh, unless some kind of miracle happens. So 
that's my medical situation. So please don't ask me about it. Uh, I think I've gone to a, a lot of effort to explain it to you tonight. Um, and, and let's just leave it at that. Okay. So I, and don't try and diagnose me from over there and tell me, oh, it's chemotherapy. It's, it's this, this. Okay, you're, you're, you, I, I don't need that. That just makes everything worse. Okay. All of that stuff just makes it worse. Trust me. Okay. And, and, and even too, you know, you may think you're being helpful, but people really aren't paying attention. I've been talking for three years. Okay. I tore my bicep. Ed, how's your shoulder? Oh, Ed, how's your shoulder? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with my shoulder. I've never had a problem with my shoulder. It's my bicep. Bicep. Okay. So you, you think you're giving me advice when, when you're not even paying attention to what I'm telling you. And I hate to complain this way, and I really do, but, you know, I, I get, you know, I'm trying to get things done, you know, that it's difficult enough. And I got to get these messages all day long. People give me medical advice and home cures and remedies and trying to sign me up to crazy stuff. I don't have time for that stuff, guys. I don't have time for that stuff. So just, you know, I don't know what to tell you. But you know, just stop bugging me with that stuff, man. You know, you, I'm telling you what's going on. I have no solution to it. If if you're a board certified doctor and you want to take, and I'll treat you for free. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Other than that, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I want a, a currently licensed board certified doctor. Said, hey, Ed, fly out here and I'll take care of you. That I'll do. The rest of the advice and the stuff, please, man, please, I beg you. And if you're being triggered about vaccines or anything like that. You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about me. Just, just please, just leave me alone with all that stuff, man. Please. So, you know, all your people triggered out there, man, over every little thing. Uh, society's doomed anyway. Okay, let's see how we're doing here on time. And we, I got another four minutes to kill. I can still use some TikToks and Reels if you want to help me out with that, man. I got a few days left where we can make some decent money by driving traffic to the podcast. You can tweet the podcast. You can share the podcast on Twitter, on Spreaker, Spreaker, Spreaker. That's the way to share it. Doesn't help me a damn bit to share the YouTube. I'm just talking into the wind. Nobody pays attention. Spreaker.com or Apple Place. It's another one you can if you but even Spreaker, I get paid more on Spreaker than Apple Place. So if you listen on Apple Place, go to Spreaker. So is that a problem? <laughs> Why not? Is that gonna kill you? You know? Oh God. So um coming up after this will be Jamie Deluxe. Who by the way, Jamie Deluxe has some good medical advice. This guy had a a a, a thing, an infection on his leg. So he's he saran wraps a potato to his leg. <laughs> That's this guy's home cure. Okay. I like Jamie Deluxe. Don't get me wrong. And we talk about some good Hollywood gossip and stuff in there too. Then searching for Patty Hearst, a true crime novel. Now you got to listen to that carefully. You got to listen to this show carefully because there's some gems in there. You got to pay attention though because not everybody can come right out and start. You know, they got real legit book deals and they know real people in real life. You can't just run out here and start screaming at the top of your lungs like you got on some of these crazy YouTubers and some of these crazy podcasters. These are real people, <laughs> okay? You know? But there's some gems in there. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. I'm not just doing this because I, you know, I got nothing to do. Okay, I'm trying to bring you real information. If you pay attention... You know, it's, I'm not going to spoon feed you everything. And there's going to be some stuff here. Some stuff I bring you so you know it's BS. You know, so you know it's crap. Yeah, you should be able to tell the difference. Look at that Arctic guy. <laughs> Give me a break with that guy. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys, we're out of time. Oh, let me play a nice little going away song for you. There we go. All right, guys, I really do love you, and I thank you. Thank you for your concern. If you want to know, you know, if you, I know people, I, Ed, how you feel? I'm just, just, no, I'm feeling like crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just when, you, when you ask me how I'm feeling, just know I feel like, and, I, and every now and then, too, I, I'd like to be able to vent and say, boy, I feel sick. I feel like crap without 100 people asking, you know, what are your symptoms? I'll cure you right now. Oh, I've, I've been watching TikTok all day. <laughs> no remedies. Take some baking soda or peroxide there and rub it through your nose. All right, guys. I love you. Good night. Everyone, when can you hear me? Can you hear me? No one cares enough to stay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You
Just open up your eyes, old oh man. Look who's come to say goodbye. Nobody needs you. 